Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Gulp. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to trigger at the same time multiple tasks with the default Gulp task manager and how to watch every time we have a new files or we have data file automatically trigger all the tasks without us typing that task over and over again inside the terminal. So first, as an example, let's create another task. For example, let's create a task, gulp.task, called uh, justice test JS. And inside here, we can create a nameless function. And inside this nameless function, we can simply do a gulp source to specify pretty much something similar to what we're doing with the style, but here we're gonna have a JS source that we're gonna define in a moment. And uh, for now, just because we're testing this thing or we're creating this new task, let's pipe uh, just the update of the destination. So we can uh, copy the gulp.dest command and just, just replace the JS. Then let's update this variable here, actually let's duplicate this variable but let's specify instead of style that we can replace it with js all over again so now we have to update js and then let's say that this is the script dot js and let's actually create this file inside our source js folder let's create a new file called script dot js that's it let's just leave it like that for now it's not necessary for us to write anything but just like this is a JS file, just a comment. So we know that the file is getting properly transferred and it's okay. And let's remember to put a semicolon here. So perfect. Now, if of course we open uh, the terminal and we type gold JS, the gold file will trigger our JS task that we just created. And it's gonna actually transfer it on the, oh, actually it's not here. Oops, sorry, it's in the <laughs> CSS. I didn't update this folder, sorry. It's the distribution JS folder. I don't wanna put my scripts inside my CSS. So let's delete this file, that's perfect. But yeah, anyway, it worked. So if we trigger again, uh, the gulp.js is gonna just simply transfer and copy the file from our source folder to our destination folder or our distribution folder, and this is the comment. So that's perfect. Now we have these two tasks, and this is a pretty common example or a really like basic example uh, of a working gulp file. If while we're working, we need to trigger all those tasks together. We shouldn't be forced to type every time gulp js, uh, trigger it, and then gulp style and trigger it again. This is really annoying, especially if we're gonna deal with other than JavaScript files, we're gonna deal with fonts, images, and other random tasks that we wanna trigger all together at the same time. In order to do that and not be forced, to manually trigger every single task, Gulp comes with a default task that automatically triggers pretty much all the tasks that are assigned to it. To trigger the default task, we should only type Gulp in uh, the terminal. But of course, because we didn't define the default task of Gulp, we're gonna get an error. So let's create a default task and uh, dynamically link all the extra tasks that we created to that default one. So let's scroll all the way down at the end of the file and let's just simply create another task. But this time we're gonna name it as suggested by the error default. And inside the default task, we're not gonna create a nameless function because we don't wanna do anything here. We're gonna actually, after the comma, and let's close this with a semicolon, of course, we're gonna concatenate an array with the square brackets of all the tasks that we wanna trigger when we call the default task. So let's trigger the two tasks that we defined before, the style task, and the JS task. Of course, the tasks inside this array, they have to be called as string in the same way we're defining the task with a formatting of a string. So that's perfect. Let's save it. Let's go back in our terminal and let's trigger again simply gulp without any specification of any task. Boom. Look what we have here. Gulp automatically recognized that we want to trigger the default task, check what we have inside the default task and it triggered automatically the style and the JS. And of course the default task, uh, you have the ability if you want after the full list of uh, all the tasks connected to the default uh, to write 
comma and then function and inside this nameless function uh, you could do whatever you want do other things so you could potentially check if the actual style or the JS were transferred properly and trigger a message or trigger a warning or notify the user with some fancy way in the terminal or outside the terminal just hook it to your desktop but uh, this is something for another lesson right now we can uh, just leave it like that we don't need to extend another function because we don't really need to do anything else so this is great this is speeding up a lot our process so it doesn't matter if we're working on a JS file or a, a CSS or a PHP PHP file, we don't need to manually trigger the task that it's related to the file, but we can just simply trigger the global goal and automatically all the tasks that we defined and assigned to the default array will be triggered automatically. But let's go an extra step uh, and uh, let's try to be more awesome and more automated. What if I don't want to anymore every time I update a file type gulp and then hit enter i don't want to access my terminal if i don't have the necessity if i don't have to and if i don't have an error if i don't have a message that i have to check i want my gulp file to automatically trigger itself every time i update one of the files that i'm actually looking at or i'm actually searching and are part of pre-existing tasks this is something that we can do with the watch task default of gulp but before taking a look at the watch task you know i have to pay my bills so let's spend like a couple of seconds on this super cool sponsor of my channel and we can jump back on the tutorial after less than a minute if you want to skip it you can totally skip it but if you don't just take a look at it maybe click on the link in the description below and just help me support my channel so see you in a bit from a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing. It's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm gonna say it. Yes, I'm gonna say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it, and install it on all the websites that you want. And if you really, really like it, you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all, and it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. Perfect, after that super cool sponsor, that really awesome, did you click on a link? No, you didn't, you're still interested in the tutorial. Perfect, you didn't close the video, that's amazing. As I was saying, let's take a look about the watch task of Gulp. So, Let's create another task and probably you're seeing the pattern here. Gulp it's all based on tasks and it's gonna be like super annoying, but that's how it is and that's how you define things. So let's create another task. And in this case, we're gonna call this task watch. And uh, this is an arbitrary name, but I suggest you to use it because it matches the exact a function, the exact method of gulp that watches the file. So you can uh, name this task however you want, but I strongly suggest you to name it watch. After the declaration of the name of the task, we need to trigger all the tasks that we wanna uh, activate the first time we trigger the watch command. And because we're already grouping all the tasks that we have inside the default task, we can simply just pass an array with the default task command and nothing else. The third parameter is the nameless function. And the nameless function here, it's really, really important because now we need to do something cool with the gulp tasks. So we can say that after the trigger of the first one, instead of closing, triggering a message or like stopping this watching, we should actually trigger the gulp watch method and the gulp watch method will give us the ability to maintain gulp up and running without stopping it and we will say to gulp hey because you're running in the background keep triggering yourself every time something gets updated and trigger a unique specific task every time that file gets updated so let's say for example in the watch we want to define first a variable called style watch so we know that is the type of files that we should take a look at it and whenever it happens and the style watch we can point to the base root 
then the source file, then the SCSS, that is basically the same exact location that we are looking for our style source, but we don't wanna just watch the style source or the style.scss, the main SCSS file. We wanna watch every single folder inside this directory. So by specifying the double star sign, we're saying that every single folder inside this subdirectory will be watched. And then let's watch inside every single folder, every single file that has an extension of SCSS. That's perfect. Let's copy this variable. Let's scroll down and in the gulp watch command, the first one, we can simply trigger that the gulp needs to watch, of course, the style watch. And every time something changes, every time the watch command finds something that changed in the series of files that we're passing here, trigger one single task. And the task that we want to trigger, it's actually the style. Let's do exactly the same for the JavaScript file. So let's duplicate this task and say, hey, the JS watch, we want to trigger the JS style and we need to define those variables as well. So here, let's duplicate this. And let's say the JS watch needs to be watching all the files inside the source with every single file that matches the extension of .js. That's perfect. Let's save it. Let's go back in our terminal. Now, instead of typing simply gulp, let's type gulp watch. And let's hit enter. Now you see, basically we have exactly the same feedback in our terminal, but if you notice here at the end of the feedback, we don't have the ability to write anything. That means that we don't have the ability to write another command because the current command is still running, is still watching. So look what happened. Let me shrink this to the right and let me shrink this to the left. So if I actually access not the distribution folder, but the source folder, and I access the base variable.css, and I change this variable from uh, the tree to tree to actual red, so F000, and then I save it. Did you see what happened here? The style command was triggered again, and my distribution folder in the CSS, now I have the color red, which is fantastic. Let's change it again. Instead of red, let's say like a light gray, F5, 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 save it. The style command gets triggered again. And then my style.min.css, the compiled one in distribution, was updated properly. That's fantastic. Let's do exactly the same with the script file. So it's simply I create another line. I don't have even have to write anything. I can write like some comment and I save it automatically. Did you see here? The JS task was triggered and the distribution folder JS script.js received my updated file, which is fantastic. In order to stop the execution of these currently running tasks in the background, you just need to hit control C. And control C should work pretty much in every machine, in every operating system. It works on Linux and Mac OS 100%. Uh, probably should work also on Windows, but control C will interrupt the execution of whatever task you're running right now, which is amazing. Just the last thing before concluding this tutorial. So there's a little problem though, because for example, if we open again the terminal, so let me split again the view in the like super cool way. This is super technical. So if we run again, uh, go watch. Now my files are, are being watched. If I create a new file, for example, in the base root, I create a new file called uh, grid.scss and I save it and I access the style.scss and I import a new file called grid. Perfect. If I save the style.scss, this style gets triggered. You can see I save it and a new line, it means that the style gets properly compiled. But if I access the grid.scss and I do something here, for example, I create grid and I say position relative, something super simple and I click and I hit save again. See, I'm saving, but here nothing happens. It happens and it works though if I interrupt the task and I hit again, gulp watch. So. Now that Google Watch was triggered again, if I save the grid, did you see? The style was properly triggered. 
That's an issue that happens because I created a new file uh, while the gulp watch was still running and it's an issue related to the way we wrote our source files. So our source file, because we use the global base directory with the dot forward slash is not recognizing and is not accepting new files or deleted files. So even if I delete a file or I rename a file, that will cause an issue because the Gulp watch will not be able to detect those files. So let's fix that by interrupting the execution of our Gulp task with control C and then let's remove the dot and forward slash from all the source and watch. We can leave it for the distribution because we are not going to change the structure, we're not going to create manually new files in the distribution folder. These distribution directories will only be handled by Gulp itself, so that's perfect. Let's trigger again Gulp Watch at this point. Now, of course, if we access the grid and I save it, the style gets saved. If I access the script, I save it, the script gets saved. But if I create again a new file in the base folder called buttons.scss, save it. Look at that, as soon as I save the file, the style gets triggered again. Even if I didn't write anything, Gulp Watch automatically recognize that file. So if I write buttons and I say, again, display, I don't know, inline block, something like that, and I save it, the style gets triggered. Of course, the final style.mean.css doesn't have that style because I didn't include, I didn't import that buttons.scss file. So, but the fact that Gulp Watch automatically recognizes that file, even if I created it while the Gulp Watch was still, was already running, it's amazing and will save us a lot of time. So let's fix that issue that is not really an issue by importing the base buttons folder. Let's save it, done. The style gets triggered properly, the buttons is there. The minified style has now the buttons class inside the distribution file. And that's fantastic. So that's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys, and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.